Hey everybody, welcome back to Hunting Mark. Today we're going to be talking about how a laser rangefinder works. So, a laser rangefinder is a tool that you use to measure distance, long distance, so that you can use that to adjust your shot so that you make sure that you're, you know, you're compensating for the drop uh, as much as you need to do based on the distance your target is and the distance that you zeroed at. So that's what you're trying to make up when you use a laser rangefinder. Now a rangefinder like this, the vast majority of modern rangefinders that you'll find, in fact I think all of them, are going to be infrared lasers. They're not going to be actual visible light lasers. Uh, they'll use infrared. So don't expect to actually see the laser shooting out and bouncing back. But the way that these work is they shoot out that infrared laser out to whatever it is you're, you're pointing it at and then it detects it at when it bounces back and it measures the time that it takes to, for that travel to take place. And it, based on that calculation of the, the time that it took for the light to travel back and forth, it gives you a fairly accurate reading of how far away the target is. Now, a rangefinder designed in this manner is not going to be incredibly accurate in terms of surgical level precision, right? You're going to have a variation of a yard or maybe a meter or two, um, depending on how far out you're, you're aiming it, right? So it's going to be off by a little bit, but it's not going to be off by nearly enough to cause a problem for how much you're trying to, to adjust the drop uh, for your shot. So when you're looking for a laser rangefinder, there are a few things you want to look out for. Uh, one of them is magnification. So pretty much every rangefinder that you buy should have at least a little bit of magnification. The most common that I've seen are 5x and 6x, uh, as low as 4x magnification. And that's just that's a that's a critical usability feature. If you're using a rangefinder, it's usually because your target is far away. And if it's far away, you need magnification to be able to see it. So having that magnification magnification is good. Decide you can decide if it's worth paying a little bit extra for the 6x magnification. A lot of budget brands have 6x, so you may not have to pay extra for that, but you can decide how important that is to you. Uh, another thing to watch out for uh, are different kinds of modes. So when you're using a rangefinder, if you're, if you're on level ground, if you're on level ground and you're just shooting it out, then it doesn't matter a whole lot what kind of modes that it has. But anytime you're on a slope, if you're measuring down or you're measuring up, then it starts to matter a little bit more whether you have what's called horizontal correction mode versus line of sight mode. So line of sight mode is exactly what it sounds like. It's how you would naturally assume that a rangefinder works. Point A, point B, measure the distance. And if point A is up here, measure the distance. Measure the distance. That's line of sight mode. Horizontal correction mode is if I'm pointing up like this, uh, it will detect the slope of what I'm pointing up and it will give me this measurement of the triangle instead of the hypotenuse of the triangle. And that is really helpful because within a certain amount of elevation change, your horizontal distance is going to affect your drop a lot more than the vertical distance, the line of sight, in that. So what you really need is the horizontal. Now that's not always true. If you have a higher slope, uh, say more than you know 15 degrees or so uh, over the course of a few hundred yards or or what have you, then the line of you know that that horizontal that or excuse me that vertical component starts making a much bigger difference and can affect your shot a lot more. So you can decide based on the situation which is going to give you the most accurate reading. Another reason to not use that horizontal correction mode would be if you have already made up your dope sheet and accommodated for that. If you've already calculated out drops on your on your ballistic sheets, on your dope sheets, and you don't need your rangefinder to provide that information, then you can use line of sight mode and be just fine. So if those types of features are important to you, make sure to pick up a rangefinder that has that. Another mode that is really handy is scanning mode in a lot of uh, situations. So the way a rangefinder typically works is you, you point, you, put, you push the button and it gives you a range. It's a one-time thing. It's like taking a picture. So if you want it to, instead of taking a single picture, to be more like a video, if you will, where it's taking picture after picture after picture, reading after reading after reading, that's called scanning mode. So that can be really helpful if your target happens to be moving. Um, or if you're trying to change, like if you want to see this target versus that target, you know, you're, you're doing stuff like that. Scanning mode can be really useful. Uh, other things you can watch out for with the rangefinder, uh, some of them will actually uh, track how fast 
your target is moving, if you're able to keep the rangefinder properly trained on it as it moves, it'll actually give you a speed reading. Uh, there are some other ones. Uh, there's an incredibly expensive one that will also give you wind data. <laughs> I believe it was Vort. No, it was Trigicon. Trigicon makes these. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, but Trigicon makes like a, an $8,000 rangefinder that also gives you wind data. Uh, so you can find stuff like that as well. Most of the time, you're not going to worry about that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, let's get into the nitty gritty here. So when you're using this, so this particular rangefinder is a WO Sports rangefinder, 6X magnification. And it does have all the modes that I discussed. We're only going to use just the, the simple ranging mode right now. We're going to hit the button and, and see what we're ranging. There's a berm back behind me. Not sure if you can see it, how well you can see it. But there's a berm back there that should be about 100 yards. And we're going to find out if it is. So here we go. I'm going to hit the power button. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to point at it. And now I'm going to hit the, hit the button again. And it gives me readings. Yep, 98.8 yards. 98.8 yards, which is really close. That's actually almost perfect. So that's 100 yard berm. That's how this works. You can use it to go out to most range. Most of these will get you out five, 600 yards. You can get ones that get you out further than that, uh, but they'll have disclaimers about how reflective the target is and what the surroundings are. When you're in snow like this, I really wouldn't anticipate uh, nearly as good of performance. I'm actually very pleasantly surprised that we were able to get such an accurate reading on that berm with all the snow. So if you have a really uniform landscape that is as bright as this, you're going to have issues, uh, if you, especially if you want to go further than 100 yards. Uh, but yeah, that's how laser rangefinders work. If you want a little bit more information, you can head to huntingmark.com. Uh, and thank you. We'll see you next time.